All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Blake. I'm an American football fan, and today I am watching some highlights. Uh, they're extended highlights of England, England versus Scotland in the 2019 Guinness Six Nations. Uh, I don't know. Is it a tournament or I don't know. I I don't know anything. I've, I've heard this term Six Nations a couple times in the comments. Um, I sure I'll figure out what the Six Nations are. Um, since it's England and Scotland, I'm, I'm assuming maybe Ireland, Wales. Um, I don't know who else would be in it, but I'm assuming it's, it's probably a small grouping of, of, uh, those countries up there. Um, and so, yeah, uh, by some request, um, you guys kind of wanted me to, to watch some more highlights of actual games. Um, and so this is only the second highlights highlight reel that I've, I've watched or I will have watched. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see it. I, I, think I do want to get, like I said before in other videos, I want to get more into watching the actual games and not so much uh, compilations because as compilations can be fun and, and they're action packed and you get to kind of see the best of, of games or of players. It's, um, it's definitely going to be nice to see the game, how it actually is. Um, Cause I know, I mean, there's, there's compilations like that in American football where it's just, crazy action packed. I know I've watched uh, some other reactions of, of guys like rugby fans watching American football and they, they get into to all these compilations and um, they haven't really even watched a real game. And so it's, it's not always that crazy. Um, so anyway, that was completely non or complete nonsense, but um, I appreciate you guys, all the support. It's been awesome. Um, I look through the comments all throughout the day on my phone at work, um, uh, and, and try to go through and at least like them. If I don't respond, I like to at least like all the, all the comments and, um, yeah, uh, leave any comments of any other games that I should react to. I know I have one other game. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but, uh, I'm, I'm going to be reacting to, to it, uh, probably tomorrow. And, uh, yeah. Uh, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, put the bell on too if you want. Um, that way you'll get notified every time I post. Um, I don't have a set schedule, but I've been regularly posting uh, Monday through Friday um, around 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time um, in the U.S. And it's kind of middle of the day the next day for you guys that are down in uh, in New Zealand and Australia. And then it's middle of the night for the guys over in Europe. So, um, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's hop right into it. Oh, wait. those are the teams right there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Put it all the way to the beginning. Okay. England, France, I'm guessing. Yeah. France, Ireland, Italy, Scotland, Wales. Okay, cool. How, how does this happen every year? Is this is this a yearly thing? With the Grand Slam in Cardiff, there was a slight sense of anticlimax before the game at Twickenham, as England faced Scotland for the Calcutta Cup. Their hopes of winning the championship dashed. Scotland were looking for a first Guinness Six Nations win at Twickenham since 1983. To put that into perspective, none of the playing squad were alive the last time that win was achieved. Well. Wow. But if England were disappointed by the result in Cardiff, it didn't show on the pitch as they started like a train. With just a minute gone, they were over for the opening score of the match. Henry Slade passed to Jack Knoll, who was back in the starting fifth. Nice. And the Exeter winger sprinted inside it the works. defenders and over the line to make it 5-0. It was a dream opening for Eddie Jones' men and for Knoll in particular. Nice move. Carroll converted and it was an early 7-0 lead. It didn't take long for England to double that advantage when a typically strong driving nice ball set. dividends. Tom Curry scored a try earlier awesome. in the campaign away to Wales, but this five-pointer was his first at Twickenham. The strength of the English pack helping to force the sail flanker over the line. Sweet. Once again, Farrell converted. It wasn't long before England were over for try number three after a quite blistering start from the home side. Kyle Sinclair revved his engine. Oh, nice hit. Defense. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Showing good speed. And when the ball was whipped out to Joe Launchbury, the big wasp second row raced over the line. Nice. Wow, England's smacking him. Into the game. And already, England were just one short of a bonus point try. 
It was a fourth try for his country for Launchbury. What's a bonus point try? Plenty of credit for his work in the build-up to the score. Approaching half an hour, that fourth hmm. try bonus arrived. Ben Youngs with the quick tap before sending Slade away. And his pass to Johnny May was delightful. This was May's sixth try of this season's Guinness Six Nations Championship, making him top try scorer. The offload from nice. Piece of magic. <laughs> that was awesome. The touchdown was one for the photographers, and England were coasting to victory with the bonus point in the bag. Excellent that was a sick pass. Converted. It was 31 0. Farrell, the top point scorer in this season's championship, with 59 points overall. It looked like damage limitation for Scotland. They managed to put a score on the board on 33 minutes. And Captain Stuart there you go. Charged down Farrell's kick and managed to hold off May for a score that gave the visitors a glimmer of hope. Albeit, it looked like a faint one. <laughs> Russell converted. It left it 31 points to seven. That's how it stayed until the halftime break. Okay. The second half could hardly have been more dramatic. In the 48th minute, the Scots scored a lovely second try, with Russell, Johnson and Price all involved before Darcy Graham cut inside and danced over the line for the score. Nice. Second try for Graham in his Great try, players. man. So what's um is there a certain team that completely dominates in the Six Nations tournament or championship? Um, like is is it kind of like New Zealand where New Zealand dom dominates the world in uh, in rugby union or I don't even know uh, world rugby yeah world rugby um, is there is does England dominate or France or who who who's the the big dog? To do when he received the ball, it slipped past the defenders and it was back to thirty one points to twelve. Shortly after that score, Scotland got over for a third try. Again, Price did really well. Nice kick. Ahead and he gathered it himself before offloading to Magnus Bradbury, who drove for the line. Nice. That was a great offload, yeah. The reality. Bradbury's try was converted by Russell, and it was 31-19. This look, looks like a comeback's brewing. Markably got back to within a converted try. Russell found Maitland, and he passed to Graham, who sprinted away for his second, and Scotland. Yeah, quick, man. Another score to excite the Scots in the crowd. A great pass from Russell and Maitland. What um, what's this BP BP up here? What it does is that? I don't know if that even means anything. I don't know. If, can you guys see my mouse? Yeah. Um, the, it's BP and BP over the scores. Um, let me know what that means in the comments. Graham, good pace from the Edinburgh winger. When it was converted, it was thirty-one twenty-four. Amazingly, Scotland drew level just short of the hour. Whoa! Pass that was picked off by Finn Russell. Nice, man! What a comeback! Wow! With nobody to blame but themselves for a collapse of epic proportions, Russell did well to anticipate the pass, and his juggling skills helped too. He converted his own try, and it was 31 points apiece. Dang, that's crazy. This was fairy tale stuff for Gregor Townsend's men. Inside the last five minutes, incredibly, they took the lead with a brilliant try from Sam Johnson. After the Scots had turned the ball over, Johnson found space and somehow got away to charge. Oh, the nice move! Oh. To get the ball down. They got the lead, no way! In 36 years, looked on the cards in the most unlikely fashion. Wow. This was drama of the highest order. Scotland were in dreamland when the try was converted the Scots led 38 points to 31 with very little time remaining that's nuts man however with the final play of the game England broke Scottish hearts after a period of sustained pressure with the visitors defending with everything they had substitute George Ford found space down the center and crossed the line under the post to save his side's blushes okay he his own score with a simple tap over to leave it 38 points all at the end of an enthralling game wow a wonderful way to end the 2019 Guinness Six Nations lots of tries what a game holy crap Scotland a show of character from England to save the draw right at the end. It had it all. 
A repeat of the draw between these two sides at this venue in 1989. That was 12 all. This one was much more dramatic. Final score at Twickenham, England 38, Scotland. Wow. That's a, that was a crazy comeback. Is that uh, where does that lie in like biggest comebacks? My um, if I, if you saw, I kept kind of looking back over because my headphones are like cutting in and out, and I was making sure that the audio was still fine. Um, but I, if they had said it, I missed it. Um, but yeah, like what where where does that stand in in comebacks? Because that was what thirty one was it thirty one zero. That I mean, that's nuts. Like in in American football, I, I mean, the biggest comeback or one of the most legendary comebacks um, was the New England Patriots versus the Atlanta Falcons in uh, Super Bowl Fifty. I don't remember which one, but it was in the last couple of years. Um, the Falcons were up twenty eight to three, and the Patriots came back and won it. Like so. What, where does this stand? Are there big comebacks like this usually? Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the support again. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.